All right, so the final part I want to talk about is just conceptually and practically, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these items, of these of these cost flow methods? And I'll tell you that on average, the latest uh, time I looked this up, which was maybe about six months ago, 35% of all inventories ish right 35 percent ish these aren't like hard and fast accounted for with fifo and about 55 percent up to 60 accounted for with LIFO. So average cost does not play a predominant role in practical landscape accounting. Most, the majority use LIFO and we'll talk about that. I'll allude to why, and then we'll talk about it with an entire accounting method in the next batch of material. So what are the advantages of FIFO? Um, basically, it does correspond to the physical flow of goods in most businesses. So this is where our accounting technique matches what's actually happening in the store. Our customers are buying our oldest stuff first. It's, they're taking that old stuff off the shelves. A lot of times, as I mentioned, the, the employees will stock shelves so that the oldest stuff is the first stuff people are grabbing and buy. Um, when we consider where these costs go, because remember our cost flow assumptions really are just taking this gas and saying, all right, well, according to the cost flow assumption, this is cost of goods sold. Therefore, the rest of it is my ending inventory, right? We saw how gas the goods available for sale really are going to fall into those two buckets primarily with a tiny little bit coming out to loss on shrinkage. So those are the three places that our goods available for sale are going to end up, right? Cost of goods sold, still at my place of business as Indian inventory on the balance sheet and then loss on shrinkage. These two guys here, of course, go to the income statement. But the balance of this asset account is going to be seen, of course, on the balance sheet. So depending on what you're assigning to cost of goods sold, you're either assigning old prices in the case of FIFO to cost of goods sold. And if you're putting the old costs of your inventory here, then your most recent costs are gonna end up on the balance sheet in the inventory account. And if you're doing LIFO accounting, then you're gonna put the most recent cost of goods sold on the income statement. You're gonna put all those recent costs into your COGS. And then your oldest costs end up in ending inventory, which is on the balance sheet. So if we're using FIFO, the oldest costs go to COGS, the most recent current costs are in ending inventory. So the inventory on the balance sheet is closest. Ending, the inventory account on the balance sheet gets closest to the current costs, right? If we're using LIFO, it's gonna be those old costs. And cost of goods sold tends to be lower, and that makes net income higher when prices are rising. If we look back at the examples that we just worked through, right? if we look at the trend of our inventory costs over time, seven to eight to nine to 10, these are monotonically increasing prices. So as prices are rising, what happens to cost of goods sold? Well, under FIFO Perpetual, it's 12,482. Under LIFO, it's 13,383. And of course, average weight of cost is just a compromise between the two. 
So FIFO will report low cost of goods sold compared to, so FIFO will report low cost of goods sold compared to LIFO, and that will result in higher net income. So, hey, it's an accrual income benefit because remember, as we talked about before, net income is not cash, right? It Some of it is accrual. And so it shows higher net income. And that idea that net income is not really cash I'm bringing in, it's revenues and expenses, which may or may not be related to the flow of cash in this period, um, it's accrual income. And that's very important to understand when we're talking about why there's this discrepancy between FIFO and LIFO. The disadvantages of FIFO, um, the cost of goods sold are not based on, cold, on current costs, right? We put all, we assume we sold the oldest stuff first. So those old inventory costs are put into COGS. And this can create a sort of error in matching. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is those old inventory costs, like maybe months ago or a prior accounting period are being matched against current period sales. So I'm making, I'm, I'm recording sales revenue at current prices, but matching old costs, old costs, perhaps months ago or prior periods against those current period revenues. Uh, in times of rising prices, COGS is relatively lower, right? It was that, yeah, so a benefit is, yeah, COGS tends to be lower. It gives higher net income. But the flip side of that is it increases our tax expense. We're not deducting as much in terms of our cost of goods sold so our pre-tax income is higher, which means our taxable income is higher. Now, taxes have to be paid in cash. Okay? And that's very different than accrual net income. So think for a moment here. Yes, FIFO gives me higher, a higher amount of net income, but I have to pay those taxes in cash whereas net income is just accrual. So do I want to boast something that is not cash-based, right? Do I want to boast a high net income if part of the issue is, hey, my taxes have to be paid in true cash money? Not necessarily a good trade-off, and this is the big reason why most people use LIFO, because inventory costs tend to increase over time, and LIFO will give you the biggest tax deduction. Um, another thing we're gonna talk about in the next batch of material is write downs. And there's a larger chance of write downs using the lower of cost or market. And that's something we're gonna talk about, like I said, in the next batch of material. But basically, since we're putting, according to FIFO, our more recent higher costs in our asset on the balance sheet, there is a bigger likelihood that we're gonna to have to bring that value down because we value inventory at the lower of cost or market. An advantage of LIFO. All right, advantages of LIFO, these are pretty mirror image. If it's a, if it's a disadvantage of, of FIFO, then it's an advantage of LIFO, right? So LIFO, matches current inventory costs with current revenue. So we don't have this error in matching up here. This, this disadvantage is no longer a disadvantage under LIFO because LIFO says, hey, this is a recent inventory cost. I'm putting it into cost of goods sold, last in, first out. Therefore, those recent inventory costs will be on the income statement and matched against our uh, sales revenue that we record this period. It's tax advantaged uh, compared to FIFO because again, we're going to be putting the most recent higher priced items into cost of goods sold. That will give me more deduction and will result in lower taxes paid. So that 
uh, that ability to pay lower taxes improves our cash flow because cash is because taxes must be paid with cash. There's a smaller chance of write downs using lower of cost or market because when we're putting the the most recent prices that are higher into cost of goods sold with LIFO, the older prices that are cheaper are going into ending inventory. So that cheaper asset has a slower chance of being written down. And it also reduces inventory profits, which basically say that inventory profits arise in an accounting system. Because there's always a delay between the most recent inventory cost and the current market price. LIFO minimizes that because what we look at to be the true profit is what I sold it at today and what I could buy it at today, right? So if you didn't make an inventory purchase today, you have some inventory profits because yesterday's price is not gonna to be today's price. And if we're talking about inventory, we get in on a monthly or perhaps bi-monthly basis, that is that price that we bought it at is not necessarily gonna be the price today. So there are always inventory profits. Um, LIFO just minimizes those. Disadvantages of LIFO, um, it has relatively relatively lower priced inventory balance, right? Because we're putting those old, cheaper costs in our balance sheet under LIFO. There's something called, uh, oh, sorry, not there yet. It does reduce net income. So a part of this advantage of paying lower taxes is, yeah, you do have lower net income. You have higher cost of goods sold, which leads really to two things, lower taxes and lower net income. Clearly desirable, eh, not necessarily desirable, but again, if you think between the two, this is in real cash money. We have to cut the IRS our state and local government a check, right? This on the other hand is just an accrual based number. It's not necessarily cash flow. So you're not sacrificing any cash when you're representing a lower net income. Um, you are sacrificing cash if you don't take advantage of tax advantage deductions like cost of goods sold. Um, you can liquidate LIFO layers. That's a problem. We'll talk about that in the next week's material. You can have some probability or opportunity for possibility, not probability, but you can have some possibility of income manipulation. Basically, you can, if you're working under a LIFO regime um, in your business, you can time your purchases to either increase cost of goods sold, or you can purposely stop purchasing and start liquidating layers. And basically you can raise net income that way. We'll talk again, like I said, we'll talk more about this in the next batch of material. Um, and then also if you're trying to make a projection of, of what you're like, you know, we're standing at the end of the first quarter, on March 30th, and we want to figure out what our cost of goods sold is gonna be for the year. Well, that becomes more problematic under LIFO than it does under average cost or FIFO, because then we have to project what, our, what the inventory costs are gonna be doing in December, because those are the inventory costs we'll be using at year end to determine LIFO costs. We have to have the most recent prices in order to determine cost of goods sold under LIFO. So we have to map out what inventory costs are going to do over the year in order to figure that out. Whereas with FIFO, we're going to be selling through the oldest costs first. So if I'm standing at March, I can use a lot of data points from not just 
the inventory I started the year with from the prior period, but also all of my purchases through the first quarter, those give me a much more established price point that's going to be prone to less statistical error in, in projecting um, because those will be the prices that will form cost of goods sold even at the end of the year. So it's a sort of, you have to forward look when you're doing a, a LIFO projection. Whereas FIFO, a lot of that is old statistics that have already been laid out for you in price points already um, purchased. And so those are the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, weighted average cost really has neither because it is a compromise between the two. But interestingly enough, hey, no one really wants that, right? Most people either use FIFO or LIFO. And LIFO because it gives you a tax break and taxes make businesses uh, very anxious and very happy when they go down.